that I was ready for it to be like, you know, the because a lot of the museums here in America that I've gone into, it's what it's like, you know, like they roll stuff. And you're like, whoa, this is like crazy, like state of the art. And they put a lot of money into it. And no, like this really old museum in this foreign country in Europe was just like, don't tell anyone that in this cave, there's really old clothes live. So it's like the bat cave for old clothes. Hello, and welcome back to my channel today. We're gonna be productive, responsible, very good historic costuming adults. Today, I have received some new archival boxes from the Container Store, and I am going to put my new treasures, if you will, into their new homes, into these boxes. So I figured since I had to do it anyways, might as well take you guys along for the journey to kind of show you some Super duper basic, not at all complicated, a little pricey, just a little bit. I mean, it's not like the cheap, it's the cheapest thing you can do, but it's not the cheapest, if that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense. Let me back that up. I'm gonna show you a very affordable way <laughs> to maintain and to protect your historic clothes, whether it's your actual historic costumes that you wanna keep forever, you know, you have grand plans that one day they'll end up in a museum. Ha, 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 ha. You actually have antique or vintage clothes. So this is super, super basic. I am not gonna go into crazy details because I am not a science person, but I am gonna give you the basics of what I know, how I was taught to, to take care of historic pieces. New treasures, I'm very excited about it. Let's get to boxing. First thing, the hands. Your fingies gotta be clean. Your hands have germs on them, grease, oil, dirt, what have you. If you have two dogs like I do, Laura only knows what's actually on my hands. Full disclosure, kind of gross, but it's true. But you also need to take off your jewelry. This is actually what I'm really, really bad about. If you watch my unboxing video of my Victorian clothes that I got from Witchy Vintage, I had my rings on. I totally forgot to take them off. You're supposed to take these off because they can catch like the prongs. If you have like a plain wedding band, or like one of those silicone bands, or if it doesn't have like prongs on it, it's usually okay to wear. I have handy dandy dish, and now I make my fingies naked. I put them on the shelf. If I forget my where my rings are, tell me they're on the shelf. Okay, okay, cool. I am gonna go wash my hands. Hands are clean, de-ringed, I am ready to go. Now I get to play the game of don't touch my hair or my face, which I'm really, really bad at. But here we go. First things first, what do you use to store your clothes? You don't want to use normal paper boxes, cool little train trunks, plastic boxes, pillowcases. I'm not calling anyone out there. Mom. You don't want to use those things. What you want to use are actual archival storage boxes, which you can actually get very, very easily from the container store. The ones I like to get are the archival under the bed garment storage. The lovely blue that is the archival box blue, which is a very soothing color. So they're acid and lignin free. They're also, um, it's also buffered material and it's airtight, it's waterproof, it's dustproof, things like that. I can actually attest, because I have a horror story for you. I have a couple of these already and in one of them lives my, I shit you not, 1820s silk loose string green dress that my mom found just wadded up in a ball at an antique store in Louisville, Kentucky. And it lived in its acid-free box with its acid-free tissue paper, but we had it at the office where I work because we were taking photos of it and using it for another series, which is called Sewing is Hard, which you can watch on the American Duchess channel when we made 1830s gowns. It's a no normal modern warehouse space, but there is a point in our roof when it rains a lot or snows a lot, it leaks. Here's the deal. I live in a desert, right? So it's not like it rains a lot to begin with, 
But when it does rain, it's like it can't deal with it. Thank God the lid was on because I literally showed up to work one day. It was dark because it was raining and I was just walking into the office and I hear this sound. I'm sitting at my computer like the drip, drip, drip. I'm like, what is that sound? What's happening? And then it hit me. Holy shit. So then I run out to the where the box was and there is a puddle of water on the archival box lid. I was screaming, you would have thought my dog had been hit by a car. Grab the box and I kind of like half fling the lid off and away from the dress. It's like I pulled the dress away from the leak and I like fling the box off because I had no idea if there was water even going in to the silk dress and what I did know about that silk dress is that because everyone was like oh my god arsenic is it gonna kill you no by the way green is not always arsenic related it's not water fast like if the dress gets wet it's no longer green and so I just had this horrific vision of like this beautiful hand sewn silk 1820s dress I just had these visions of it just being completely destroyed from this nasty ass water that was leaking on it but this box protected it it completely survived. The box completely survived. I cannot speak more highly about these boxes. They do their job. Because they're not just cardboard. Like, they're acid free, they're lignin free. They're not going to leach any sort of chemical into the air to ruin or speed up the decomposing of the garment. It's going to protect them. This is exactly what museums use to protect their historic pieces. And so for $45, you get one big box and you get some tissue paper. So this is acid-free tissue paper. And if you don't know, the, the reason why you want acid-free boxes and acid-free tissue paper is because the lignin, it's the stuff that makes plants crunchy, the fibrous materials. So it can end up in paper and that's what causes paper to become brittle and yellow and like, like, kind of like the Avengers when Thanos snapped his fingies. They're really easy to put together too. It's not a big deal at all. Um, Oh God. <laughs> and now I set my entire house on fire. Amazing. In my defense, I literally just put these up this morning. So my like spatial awareness of my new shelves, it's not really there. So you have your boxes. Now what you need to do is you take that tissue paper and you line the bottom of the box with tissue paper so it comes up on either side. Lots of tissue paper, you can't actually use too much. So really quickly, before I do this, I wanna make a quick note. If you live in a humid climate, if you live in a buggy climate, you're gonna have more things to be concerned about. Silverfish, they're spawn of Satan, and they eat the things, and they are super nasty. Moths, of course, so just be aware. Having traps out where you keep those things, making sure that your home is as climate controlled as possible. Those are other things to keep in mind when it comes to like conserving your, your vintage clothes, antique clothes, or your historic costuming pieces. So now we've lined things in the tissue paper. So the next thing that we need to do is consider how we're gonna put things in the box. Obviously in an ideal situation, each garment would have its own box. I do not live in that sort of situation. So I'm gonna put my Victorian bustle skirt and petticoat and then two bodices. Even though the petticoat is more fragile, one, it's long, but because there's so much of fabric in the skirt and there's interlayering going on, I think it's too heavy to go on top of the bodices. I think the bodices are obviously gonna be lighter, so I'm going to put them on top of the skirt. 
this petticoat is shattering a little bit. I'm not sure if it's the wool, the polished cotton or the silk, but I just peeled off some of the tissue paper and I can see some fibers. So I'm gonna be super, super careful when I lift it. But when you move store clothing, you want to try and support it as best as you can. When things are super fragile or big, it's usually good to have an extra set of hands. Right now you can see I'm just holding it, not grabbing it, but lifting it from below. And now I'm just going to lay it in the box. Once it's laid, then it's kind of time to zhuzh it. We want to try and prevent creasing as much as we can. This petticoat already has creasing, so I need to be conscientious of that. I need to try and protect the delicate textile as much as I can. We have shattering, bits falling off. So I'm going to try to find a way to lay it out in such a way that we're not going to crease it and there's no stress or as little stress as possible on the garment itself. So that just means trying to open it up as much as we can. Luckily, this petticoat is pretty much the exact length of the garment box, so I don't have to fold anything over. If I was, I would stuff that fold point with tissue paper so it doesn't crease and it's wrapped around. What I am gonna do is since the back of this and it's back up, I'm gonna take some tissue paper, put it, kind of sandwich it in there to help support the pleats and this the extra fabric here because this is actually where a lot of the stress is and you can just see that. This has a train on it because it's bustled and trying to make sure that things aren't like kind of bunched up. You want to try to get it as smooth and flat as possible. Tissue paper. The hem of this is also much more delicate than the waist, so I'm definitely pulling it to favor the hem point of the petticoat, so that way that's not all folded up, where the waist is actually pretty strong. It's the hem right now that's, that's delicate. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another layer of tissue paper, then we'll put the bodices over top of it. So now I've push, placed the tissue paper over the petticoat, and now I'm gonna put the two bodices in over top of it. It's a lot of the same, except in this case, if I need to stuff out the sleeves, I might do that or kind of round out the shoulders, depending on if I think there's stress points there. We'll kind of just play it by ear once, once I get it in there. All right, so it's 1880s bodice time. We're just gonna lay it in there all nice and delicate like. Look at that, just zhuzh it, smooth it out, no wrinkles. Just making it lay as happy as possible here. Now we're gonna take some tissue paper, we'll roll that up, and then we're gonna insert that into the arm's eye and into the arm and sleeve of the bodice. This looks a little aggressive, I have to warn you. I was being super delicate though when I was doing it. I just noticed that my man hands and I were looking kind of intense. <laughs> uh, so you you want to round everything out. Sleeves are usually a, a shatter point because of the creasing, so I'm trying to prevent that from happening. This bodice already has some shattering and holes in it, so I'm trying to, to keep it as elevated and rounded and as happy as possible. I'm going to take a little bit more tissue paper here and just fill out that body to help again. Everything's rounded and supported. Look how good that looks. Hey baby, how you doing? Oof, you live under my bed now. <laughs> all right, so it's surprise bodice time from a couple weeks ago. I assume you guys recognize all these pieces. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna lay down some more tissue paper to create an additional layer between the Edwardian bodice and the Victorian bodice. I've actually run out of tissue paper at this point. I remembered it while, by watching this footage back. So I'm not gonna stuff this one in the same way. I'm just gonna try to support the sleeves here. Uh, I need to order more tissue paper to be perfectly honest with you guys. So just an another different way to do it. Tuck it in, tuck it in. Uh, now we're gonna wrap this baby up like a Chipotle burrito, uh, or maybe a croissant if you're feeling bakey. Uh, but just tuck everything in, add an additional layer of acid-free tissue paper there just to 
protect everything from every possible scenario. And then some sweet box, box action is coming your way. Look at that lid. Oh, yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's obviously a little bit different than the other videos I've put out already. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I've done my best to explain my process, but like I said, I'm not a conservator. This is just what I've picked up over the years and just kind of what I've remembered and I put into practice. Now, hold on tight because it's about ready to get real weird up in here. I'm doing a sun test. I'm doing a sound test. We'll see how this looks. I decorated my wall. I even lit the candle. Not that I think you can see it, but I'm trying to make it look nice in here. Now I'm dizzy.